This is uh, the third time I've revisited the topic of the title, Is the Charter Worth the Effort? Uh, in 2020, in May of 2020, I put out the original video, uh, Is the CFA Charter Worth the Work? Uh, and I followed it up about a year later, in November of 2021, uh, Is the Charter Worth the Effort? Revisited, if you want to look up those videos first as part one and part two. And the conclusion uh, that I arrived at in there was that it's only worth it if it makes you better. Uh, if it makes a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, then, then no, it wasn't worth it at all. And you could say that of any undertaking that you pursue. That if you do something and it makes no difference, then no, it wasn't worth it. This past summer, the Financial Times, the digital side of the Financial Times. Let's be clear and separate the print side from the digital side. The print side is is got some gravitas. The digital side is, well, it is what it is. Anyways, there were two articles that were um, sort of uh, uh, harsh on the CFA designation. The first one was about demand falling off a cliff, and I had done a video on that one. And we tore apart the article and came to the conclusion that the journalist should not be using the title journalist because it was nowhere near journalism. It was sensationalism and it was just for clicks. And I think the author knew that it was just for clicks. Um, a couple of weeks later, there was another article uh, that was critical about the CFA designation. Uh, and I'm not going to post it or post the link because that's what they want. It's clickbait. It, it's really just for clicks. Uh, but it's posted by another, and I'm using air quotes here, journalist. Uh, and um, this is, I have on the screen, the last paragraph. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare this last paragraph with the last verse of a poem. But first, we're going to read the poem. It's, a, it's, I think, it's one of the most perfect poems written. For a poem to be perfect... Uh, it has to have two things. It has to have fantastic structure and it has to mean something to you. Uh, that's a perfect poem. There are lots of great poems that don't have great structure, but they mean a lot to you, or they have really great structure, but they don't really mean anything to you. Um, this one is both. It's uh, Robert Frost, The uh, Road Not Taken. And we're going to, it's, it's not a long poem, but it's a great poem. Uh, so we're going to go through it. Then we're going to come back and compare the last verse of that poem with this statement, which is the last paragraph of this author's story. Let's just read this without any without any uh, um, editing or, or edit, sorry, not editing editorial on my part. We'll just read it for what it is. Then we'll go and uh, spend some time with that poem. I've already made my bet. Ten years ago, I plastered every surface in my kitchen with post-it notes of formulas and definitions. I had vivid, inexplicable dreams of being trapped in an Excel cell. Uh, sorry, but an editor should have caught that. Uh, that's how much the CFA got inside my head. How much getting those three letters meant to me. A few years ago, I decided the annual $275 fee wasn't worth it and gave up using the letters altogether. Okay, let's just leave it at that. We'll analyze this when we bring, uh, when I come back to the screen, with, uh, I'll put the, the uh, uh, last verse of the poem down here uh, and we'll analyze the two together. But let's, let's dive into that beautiful poem. Okay, let's uh, work our way through this. And uh, I promise you, we're not, uh, we're not wasting our time here. There is great meaning in this and, and uh, it is relevant to the title, Is, is the uh, Charter Worth the Effort? Um, first, let's contrast the title with the content of the poem. The title is The Road Not Taken, but the poem is about the path taken. It is about the road that is taken. So there's a bit of a contrast there. So uh, when we get to the last paragraph and we uh, look at the word sigh, we're going to ask ourselves, is that a sigh of contentment or a sigh of regret, being that the poem is about the path taken, but the title was The Road Not Taken? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Now, let me say something about the word yellow. Uh, when I was first introduced to this, way back in high school, uh, it, was, um, it was mentioned that it must be fall, it must be autumn. This is a decision being made late in life. Uh, and now that I think about it, I go, well, it doesn't feel that way. 
So if you look at the uh, meaning of the word yellow uh, in, in terms of um, any uh, illusory content uh, to yellow or any symbolism for yellow, yellow is a symbolism for optimism. Um, and I think that that matters the most for this poem, that read in that light, uh, two paths diverged in a yellow wood, that, that yellow is uh, symbolic of optimism. The poem reads with a lot more, uh, I think, uh, a lot more meaning. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. This is the first path. So you have two paths. And the first one, good visibility all the way down till it bends in the horizon. This uh, line right here is rather interesting. Uh, sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. And this is saying that you, you, this is talking about the inevitability in life of having to make decisions that send you on a different trajectory, that you can't do both. Should I drop out of school or should I finish school? Shall I marry this person or shall I not marry this person? And you cannot do both and be the same person. It's, it's an inevitability that as you travel through life and hopefully you're in a yellow wood full of optimism, as you travel through life, you will come to these decisions where you cannot be the same person. You must make a decision and it is going to change you. Sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair. Now notice here, it's just as fair as the first one. At first, at first glance, saying, okay, there's this one, there's this one, seems just as fair. And having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for the passing there, had warned them really about the same. So saying that, well, this one here looks a little bit grassy, but they're just as fair and they seem to be worn about just the same. Uh, perspective. So he's looking down both and saying, well, there's this one here. I can see all the way down and there's this one here. It seems a little grassier, you know, but in reality, they, they're probably both just as fair. And both that morning equally lay in leaves. No step had trodden black. Well, it's morning, right? So uh, when we think about leaves, no step had trodden black, this is probably where uh, my high school teacher got the idea that it was fall, is that leaves had fallen on the path and there you are in the morning. Well, morning is also the beginning of things. Uh, 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 so you can look at it that way as well, which is the way I, I kind of look at it. Uh, oh, I kept the first for another day. I want you to pay attention to the structure, how perfect this is. This one sentence. That's one sentence. One sentence to separate, and then you have the rest. Oh, I kept the first for another day. And how many times do we say that? You know what? I'm going to drop out of school, right? I'm going to, I'm going to you know, just take a year out, off of school, and I'm going to go travel the world. I'll come back and finish it. You know, I finished my level one. I'm, I'm going to go off and do some things now, but I'll come back and finish it. Keep, the, keep it for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. And this is saying, you know, that once you set out on a particular path, how way leads on to way, that decisions you make today uh, result in a different set of decisions you'll have tomorrow based on what you made today. And that will then lead you down another path and then another and another. And you, you usually never come back. Uh, students who take a gap year, very many of them never ever come back. They never come back that way. Now this is the last where it all comes together. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Is this regret or contentment? I shall be telling this with a sigh. Again, I bring you to the title, The Road Not Taken. I took the one less traveled by and it has made all the difference. Well, was it a good difference or a bad difference? Is this a sigh of regret or a sigh of contentment? I take the yellow meaning optimist uh, or optimism. Uh, 
and this statement down here to be one of contentment. This is contentment. And I think the message in here is, it's not that you took a path less traveled by that has made all the difference, is that you made the difference on the path that you were on. And that's why I get the idea of optimism here, so that the road not taken doesn't really exist. Because whatever path you're on, it is what you make of it. Uh, and so this last paragraph, uh, because I feel that the traveler, no matter what decision they made, I feel that the, the author of this poem, the traveler in this poem, would have said that last paragraph anyways. Except they would have said, I took the one most traveled by, and that has made all the difference. What's the other thing that jumps out at you in this whole poem? that the absence of something, there's something missing. It's never mentioned in this poem, but its absence should jump right out at you. We're traveling, there are two paths, they diverge. There's no mention of a destination. There is no destination in this poem at all, not one mention of where we're going. Because it would seem to me that if you uh, come to a crossroads and you say, which path shall I take? Well, where are you going? It doesn't matter in this poem. That's not the point. The point is the path that you're on. Whatever path you're on, will it make a difference? Can you say this last verse, no matter what you did, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a woods and I. I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. See, that's, that's it right there. I think that's it. That's the whole poem there, is that can you say that of, of these major decisions, these crossroads you get to in life, can you say that the decision you made, no matter what it is, made all the difference? Because it's not always good advice to be a maverick. It's not always good advice to take the hard way. It's not always good advice to take the path less traveled by. Sometimes, hey, listen, to stay on the path. This is the path you want to be on. Um... It is the path that's important, not the destination. That's why in this whole poem, there is never a mention of a destination at all. Okay, enough for the, uh, for the poetry class. Let's take this back and contrast it with the last paragraph, because this is the last verse of this very optimistic poem. And what the author wrote was a very pessimistic story about CFAI. Let's compare those last two, par- those last two uh, things. All right, let's compare these two. Uh, how does this last one start? I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Uh, looking back, nostalgically telling a story. How does this end? Ten years ago, I plastered every service telling the story ages hence. Ten years ago, this is what I did. It ends, it has made all the difference. And she ends, it has made no difference. This poem was optimistic. And if you read this person's story, it was very pessimistic. Uh, The poem itself had no destination. It focused on the journey. And we're going to read a few more of her paragraphs and we're going to see she focused on the destination. I don't know that you can get a better contrast. Uh, And while the poem has uh, great lessons, great wisdom in it for how to approach life, Uh, This person, uh, or at least from what I read here, uh, and the conclusion that she makes, this is tragedy. This is tragedy because it was purely wasted time. Uh, This author uh, would be, I think, if I had to come up with a poster child for tragedy, it would be this author. So let's look at uh, some of the other uh, sentence, uh, the paragraphs that uh, that, uh, she had uh, written. And let me just tie this back to the title. Is the charter worth the effort if you if you make of it something this person did not so was it worth it for this person no it wasn't because she approached it the wrong way it wasn't a path that she was on she was focused on the destination it's not the path that you take it's what you make of the path that you're on and this person made nothing of the path they were on okay two more paragraphs here And when I say, you know, the poem was written by an optimist, this uh, article was written by a pessimist. 
and we'll see the height of pessimism down here. And this is why she's such a tragic figure. I wanted those three letters on my business card. I wanted those three letters. I didn't want the knowledge. I wanted those three letters on my business card, mainly because as a young female reporter covering Ireland, you know, like as a young reporter, why? Why, why, why would it matter if you were female or male? Uh, as a young reporter covering Ireland's banking crisis, I, I find that to be uh, a sort of redundant. Uh, what would it matter if you were male or female, right? Too much focus on things that don't matter. Uh, because as a young, we'll just take it out for her because clearly she uh, isn't much of a journalist either. As a young reporter covering Ireland's banking crisis, I wanted a shortcut to credibility. A shortcut to credibility. I thought the CFA would prove I was a grown-up and would help me find my finance tribe. Well, you know, if you're going to be a grown-up, stop talking like this. Uh, and at the margins, I thought at the margin, I thought a broad grounding in finance could be a useful complement to my journalism degree. Well, if you approached your journalism degree the same way you approach this, yeah, I can see that that was probably a waste of time. In this short little period that I've edited your story, I can see that you didn't get much out of your journalism degree because you're a pessimist. And it, it, it comes through in the very next paragraph that I took, first sentence. The truth is, what's in the textbooks never really mattered that much. Well, we can tell by your, by your quote, journalism that you didn't think was in the, what was in the textbooks mattered much because you didn't take much from it. Uh, what mattered was the stamina and character that passing the exams demonstrated. Um, you know, I'm going to give a half a point for that because it does say something about someone that undertakes something they don't have to do. It does say something about someone who uh, completes university that you are demonstrating the willingness and the ability to learn for the most part, but not always. It depends on how you treat the path you're on. Until quite recently, 20-hour days of work and study were feats to be celebrated, and an easy fraternity was forged between those who bore matching battle scars. Such bad writing. <laughs> Such bad writing. Uh, but the world is changing. That kind of endurance is less likely to be openly celebrated. Uh, is it? It's less likely to be openly celebrated? Says who? Spending time uh, improving yourself, uh, leaning into it, showing dedication is less likely to be celebrated, says who? Uh, and is far less likely to attract the millennials who are pushing their employers for protected weekends and guaranteed vacation days. Really? You're speaking for a whole generation? Um, from what I've seen, uh, you know, you hear a lot about millennials being, you know, the, the uh, entitled uh, generation. But I don't see that. Many of the, the ones that I'm aware of have multiple jobs. They call them gigs. They, they, they work this job, then they run off to the next one. They drive Uber at night. They do it. I don't see that they're looking for that. So I don't know uh, where you're getting this from. But this is very pessimistic. Pessimistic. And if this is truly what you believe, uh, then this was probably... This probably made no difference either. And I can tell just by the editing that I'm doing to your little story here that it made no difference. You traveled two paths and they made no difference. Can you think of a more tragic figure? Don't let that happen to you. If you're finding that the path that you're on is not making a difference at all, maybe you're focusing too much on the destination and not enough on the journey. There are three levels that you have to get through. And... I think, uh, as a collection uh, of knowledge, it is probably the best collection of knowledge, generalized knowledge about the markets, that has an academic content and a real-world content. I think it's the best collection that you can find. Now, you can be critical and say, oh, but the market is this, and the, this is a new theme, and that's a new thing. Find me a source uh, that is as comprehensive as the curriculum for CFA that has all of that in there as well. Find me a source. Find me an alternative source. The CFA is a generalist designation. It's meant to get you up to speed very, very quickly. Uh, but it is the journey that you take. It's not the three letters. This person, I thought the CFA, 
would prove I was grown up. If I just get those three letters behind my name, destination focused, very pessimistic, and in the end gave it up. It wasn't worth it for this person. And there's the lesson. If, if you have this perspective that all I got to do is get those three letters and everything's going to work out for me, and you approach this in terms of what's the least amount of work that I have to do. And I do get, I do get this, and every, every professor gets this on the first day of class. There's always one or two students on the first day of class that come in and say, do I have to read the book? Are your slides enough? If I, attend, if I don't attend class, will I still be able to pass the exam? What's the passing score on the exam? Can you pass with a 65? Like if I get 70, can I still pass? All, right away, all the questions, trying to figure out the least amount of work they can do. Because they think, all I need is that degree and doors will open for me. No, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. You're focusing on a destination and not on the path that you chose. You're not an optimistic learner. You're not an optimistic human being. You're rather pessimistic about the journey and so focused on the destination, you're going to miss, miss all the richness. And when you get to the destination, you will decide that huh, this destination is no different than any other destination. This hasn't worked out for me. And I've met these students later in life who complain that, well, I got a degree and it wasn't worth anything to me. And I know exactly who you are. You're that person on the first day of class who started negotiating how little you had to do to just get by. Well, congratulations. Here you are spending your life just getting by. So yes, the charter is worth the effort. Anything is worth the effort. It's what you make of it. If you approach the process as the goal, not the outcome, but the process as the goal, and you're optimistic on that journey, yes, it will make all the difference. But if you're like this author and you're too focused on getting to the end, what is she doing telling her story ages and ages hence that she took a path that made no difference? And again, this is a tragic figure.